Hello everybody and welcome into the Pillow Fort. Outlaws of Thunder Junction is here and it's brought with it some crazy commanders for the format. So today I'm going to cover a Pillow 14 for one of them. That's 14 cards for under $14 that you should have when you're building around this commander. Today we're talking about one of the most popular ones, Obeka, Splitter of Seconds. One blue, black, red for an Ogre Warlock 2-5 with Menace, and whenever Obeka, Splitter of Seconds, deals combat damage to a player, you get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. So the goal with these 14 cards I'm going to cover today are to do two things. One, to help Obeka get through and deal damage to your opponents, and two, powerful upkeep triggers that will be the payoff for the deck. Let's start off by talking about some evasion. Demonic Embrace is one black black for an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature gets plus three plus one and has flying and is a demon in addition to its other types. That flying is great, but that plus three can possibly give you five upkeeps. Definitely a demonic thing to do. Speaking of flying, we have Fey Flight. One in a blue for an enchantment with flash. When it enters the battlefield, enchanted creature gains hexproof until end of turn and Enchanted Creature gets plus one plus O oh, and has flying. That added hexproof is definitely going to help because Obeka is going to be a lightning rod for removal. Security Bypass is one in a blue for an aura. As long as Enchanted Creature is attacking alone, it can't be blocked. Enchanted Creature has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, it connives. Obeka most likely will be attacking alone, so that drawback isn't too bad, but the connive trigger is huge for Obeka, not only to dig a little deeper into your deck, but because you can put 1-1 counters on Obeka and keep getting more and more upkeeps. You come to a river. One in a blue for an instant. Choose one. Fight the current, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, or find a crossing. Target creature gets plus one plus O oh until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. This helps with a little bit of spot removal with that first option, but that second option will help Obeka break through and give you one additional upkeep for that power boost. Reverse the polarity. One blue blue for an instant. Choose one, counter all other spells. Switch each creature's power and toughness until end of turn and creatures can't be blocked this turn. So this one is extra tricky because of course you can counter all spells, which is useful. Making creatures unblockable this turn is a huge benefit, but switching each creature's power and toughness shouldn't be overlooked. Say Obeka's unblocked, you can switch her power and toughness out of nowhere and get five upkeeps. Two-handed axe. Two and a red for an equipment. Whenever equipped creature attacks, double its power until end of turn, and it has equip one and a red. It also has sweeping cleave. One in a red for an instant adventure. Target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn. This card's great with either the instant or the equipment route. Either way, you're getting a lot of upkeep. Call of the Ring. One in a black for an enchantment that says at the beginning of your upkeep, the ring tempts you. Whenever you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life. If you do, draw a card. So this is half in the upkeep camp and half in the evasion camp. Having a creature as your ring bearer gives it pseudo evasion, but moving your way through all of those abilities in possibly one turn, that's a lot of value. Now let's talk about the payoff cards that have those crazy upkeep triggers. Struggle for Project Purity. Three and a blue for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you're gonna choose a mode. For this deck, you're gonna choose Brotherhood because it reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent draws a card. You draw a card for each card drawn this way. This card is already crazy and I think it should go in a lot of casual EDH decks. But in this deck, I don't think it'll draw too much attention until it's too late. Protection Racket. Two and a black for an enchantment that reads, At the beginning of your upkeep, repeat the following process for each opponent in turn order. Reveal the top card of your library. That player may pay life equal to the card's mana value. If they do, exile that card. Otherwise, put it into your hand. Plarg and Nazari. Three red red for a 5-4 Orc Afrit. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. An opponent chooses a non-land card exiled this way. You may cast up to two spells from among the other cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. This is basically a tally at home, but in this deck, I think it fits right in. Razalam, the War President. I'm definitely not saying that right. Three blue black for a three four Time Lord Noble. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose two life and exile the top card of your library. 
you may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. Each non-creature spell you cast from exile has Conspire. A lot of the other creatures in your deck probably aren't going to be attacking. So giving them the ability to buff up some of your other spells is going to be a major help. The Tenth Doctor. Three blue red for a three four Time Lord Doctor. Whenever you attack, exile the top card of your library until you exile a non-land card. Put three time counters on it. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Time counters fall off at the beginning of your upkeep, so there's a good chance you'll be able to fast forward a lot of those spells. Court of Ire. Three red red for an enchantment. When Court of Ire enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, Court of Ire deals two damage to any target. If you're the monarch, it deals seven damage to that player or permanent instead. So in this deck, you can probably get the monarch back with all the evasion. But laser beaming things for seven damage each upkeep that you have, that's crazy removal. I'm finishing things up with the most expensive card out of the 14. Descent into Avernus. At the beginning of your upkeep, put two descent counters on Descent into Avernus. Then each player creates X treasure tokens and Descent into Avernus deals X damage to each player, where X is the number of Descent counters on Descent into Avernus. Descent into Avernus puts the game on a crazy fast clock. And hopefully you'll come out on top with all the other big payoffs in the deck. So there you have it, 14 cards for under $14 to help you start a new deck. Let me know what you think about my picks in the comments. And feel free to let me know if you like this style of video. Alright everybody, until next time, I'll see you in the fort.